Hello and welcome to Die Rolling with the ever traitorous Will. Back again for another video, but this time I'm talking about the top 10 games of 2023. So these are the games that I have enjoyed the most playing this year. Might not necessarily have been released this year or being released this year, but it's games that I've personally enjoyed or looking forward to coming forward. But I've also got my game of the year, not necessarily in the order I say, like there may be some variation in there in future this, but Typically, the top three I typically have set in stone, but we'll uh, but we'll come to that as I go through the list, which I've got on this little pad that I have down here. So I may look away for that, but otherwise, let's get right into this list. So to start off is a unique game. Uh, it's like a little, it's a small, uh, a small uh, dexterity game called Stomp the Plank. You play as a little elephant and you have to get across the end of the plank without being knocked off, playing a game of chance of poker, trying to draw out cards and hopefully getting the um, elusive six treasures in a row. If you manage to get those six treasures, you instantly win the game. Otherwise, you can stop and make others have more chance of falling off as you go through. We always find it fun as a, as a family group, and it was a uh, really uh, fun that everyone was saying, oh, come on, go and put another one down, and it ended up being quite a, a lot of fun. So it's, it's out of my list for that reason, for the fact that it's just so many music. It's so easy to bring out. If everyone's hot on a hot, sweaty day or really can't bother to think of a game, it's a game to bring out just to have a bit of fun rather than have something really intensive to play. Um, following from that is a game that's been out for a long while. Number nine is Carcassonne. Um, recently played over Christmas and it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun just playing using uh, making meeples to try and calculate where you're putting the tiles down. Everyone's got a, it goes into an analysis paralysis sort of thing, thinking about where they're putting their tiles, where they're putting their meeples so they can score the most points or where they're going to not put the tiles so that everyone else doesn't get points. Most of the time it was trying to not get everyone else win points. But we weren't playing too aggressive game we're playing just a very standard game but i uh, really enjoy playing it and it just reminds me of how fun that game actually is and it's definitely worth to have a copy of it on your shelf um at number eight is a favorite of fan favorite of mine and a fan favorite of uh claire who you may have seen <laughs> again but she but we love wingspan it's such a lovely game it's uh, a game all about birds and you're building up your little population of birds and uh, as you go through your uh, you're d building up a little engine that goes and either lays a load of eggs gets you more cards so you can get more points stores a lot of uh, food on your cards so that you even get even more points. But we always like learning the little facts about all the birds and we always have our little bird feeder out the window. So it's always nice just to see uh, what's going on out there and seeing uh, all the birds as we're playing the game and finding out all the fun facts about them as they uh, fly around the garden. Uh, number uh, seven for us is Sniper Elite. So for me, I really, really enjoyed Sniper Elite. Adam introduced it initially. I backed the Kickstarter and I was like, I was I was blown away of how good the game was. The only concern with it and why it's not up uh, is as everyone's complaint didn't come with a screen. Didn't come with a screen to uh, block out the the view of uh, of a hidden movement game. It's the one thing, one thing. If they added that, it could have been. I think I've a few bits higher because, but. As a whole, the game is good. I think the limitation in it is that there isn't as many boards, but obviously you had to back more of the game or buy more of the expansions. But as a generic game to bring out and play, I thought it was really, really good. And it was always had a lot of uh, intense moments where you think, oh, am I going to get away with it? Or am I just going to be killed at this uh, on this corner? And it ended up being a really, really enjoyable experience. Number six is a new one. It's not out yet, but it's called Rogue Angels. We played it on the channel uh, and it's made by the people that have made Burning Suns. We may have seen that as well on this channel, um, but it's a very Gloomhaven-like choice-based adventure game where you're having to be a space um, cadet and you're uh, and we only tested the starter mission where we're trying to escape from uh, the uh, get to or get some information from the ship that we were on. Um, it's been a while since I played this. So I'm trying to recall what it <laughs> what it was we played, but it but I just remember the story was really good and us pretending to be all the characters and trying to give them a voice was really fun. I'm looking forward to seeing when this is a fully released copy because it's so so um in depth of what they're trying to achieve with this game it's like so many choices so many varieties where this game could take you because of we only played the tutorial it, it there's so much still to explore and i'm just excited to see what else there is and i'm excited to bring this back to the table and to join in with the rest of the die rollers and play this through to the end it would be really really good 
Um, number five is Dungeon Saga Origins, as everyone's favourite game. We're looking forward to playing more of this in the coming year. Uh, we had uh, our Sir, was it Sir Dryden or whoever it was? He was uh, and he was going in and he was uh, stopping all of our attacks coming through. It was very similar style of game to Hero Quest in the fact that you have a DM running all the monsters and then you're yourself trying to um, navigate through this dungeon and find all the treasure uh, for your particular characters. I had a couple of I had a character that was constantly getting all of the secret loot whilst everyone else is fighting out to the death in the middle of the way of them coming out and finding out what what on earth did she miss? And it ends up being quite an enjoyable experience of just being able to go through it didn't feel like we were ganging up on the dm a lot it felt like they had a chance to ret retaliate back and it also felt like that we had a great time just as a group just enjoying just having a laugh of the story that was being told right in front of us and it's definitely a game that i think everyone should be looking out to get or even put on their shelf for 2023 because it's like you could have so many different dynamics of different people playing and it's just such an enjoyable experience Number four was a tough one. Uh, I was toyed between a couple, was between three and four, though, uh, the, in terms of placing. Uh, they were both good games this year, very good games, and I'm looking forward to seeing where they sort of develop for one. Uh, and the other one was just because it was an enjoyable experience to the table, and it's something that I want to now bring to uh, a, a pick up myself, which is, uh, which is in this case, uh, Shadow of Brimstone, uh, specifically the Gates of Valhalla, because that's the one we've played. Um, and it's been a while since I played Shadow of Brimstone properly as a group uh, until this year. Like, I really played it about three or so years ago, and I remember sort of elements of it, and I remember just really enjoying it. But I didn't remember how much fun that I would have from playing it again, because it, it just felt like just such a good game to bring to, grip, uh, to get to grips with. It's such a nice role-playing experience as well, so you could play as the characters and going on these journeys and adventures and finding all the different monsters. Only downside to it is probably monster variation. There's not a huge amount, maybe like with different cards and different uh, roles, the, the, you get some, but in terms of what you're seeing come to the board all the time, it's probably the same kind of creatures and you kind of know what to deal with. However, the interesting mechanic that makes it for me is the um is the uh when you roll double ones and you get surprise attacked by a random group of monsters and they come out from all directions to just come and get you and we just found it hilarious when we were getting to the end uh, we defeated all these orcs and we suddenly got surprise ambushed by all these uh harpies that were just out to get us so we just thought they'd all plan this aerial attack ready to get us and i'm just excited to play even more of these missions coming forward there's a few of uh, the upcoming of the recent missions on the channel with adam um, and that's a, a that will be really fun to watch as well but i'm excited to just play it again with them all which brings me on to number three which is the one that i was talking about earlier which is why i was like toying between where it should go and i uh, chose lorcana now there's a lot of uh interesting i love deck builders and i love that kind of thing of like planning in uh, a deck and building it and battling against someone else but the disney theming was a really big hit with uh, my group and things and we just really it really took off the only complaint of the game is we think 20 law may be a bit too small to get going with the game we find that you don't, don't get through your entire deck of cards which is a bit unfortunate where in some games you actually get through most of your deck and actually get to see at least 20 30 of your cards at least half the deck before the game is over whereas this feels like you barely just begin before you can just end on the, or, uh, the game on one turn so it's like strategizing when to ta uh, tack enough so that you can either eke out that game longer or not at all but then we were only playing the starter decks at the time we've recently built decks and that's i felt been a bit more enjoyable having actually had a built up a collection the reason why it's not higher was the demand uh, for this game was so high. It was incredibly difficult to get a hold of m a lot of the stock. I've only recently been able to get a hold of like a good amount so that I'm able to build significant decks. That <laughs> at least I'm able to build something with like, at least that I've got a chance of winning something. But it's um, but it's exciting to see where this game is going to go and the development that it is taking forward. It's it's very interest. It's very interesting to see. And with the Disney franchise, I think it can go above and beyond where it is. But for now, it's going to sit at three. Might change next year, so just watch this space. Number two is again one of my favourites from last year. It's gone down a spot. Uh, it's Moonrakers. Main reason that it's on here is because they had a new thing for um this year which was a couple of expansion sets and they worked with like a new um app that was like a 
the solo or co-op mode where you could go and uh, explore the galaxy and it was fun and you'd follow through his whole story adventure which was randomly generated so each experience was completely different and I really enjoyed having that option to play this game and I'm excited to see well if they can do more with it or if they owe more the only the only thing about having obviously the app is that uh, for this generation means that if the app dies, there's no more <laughs> Moonrakers to play in this mo in that particular mode set because you can't get the app or download it or use it anywhere. So having the physical copy and having everything else still is one of my favourite games to bring out for the fact that it's a simple deck builder. It very feels uh, feels a lot like games like Slay the Spire, which is one of my hype games for next year. I'm excited to see how that Kurt turns out because it's one of my favourite PC games of one of my favourite pieces of games of all time. For how simple, how quick I was able to play a few rounds, and I just played it for hundreds of hours just trying to perfect how to how to play the game and I just enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to see how it uh, has a table uh, top presence and this game is very very close to that so I'm intrigued and in how uh, Moonrakers is going to sit next year but at the moment it's still one of my top games of uh, 2023 and from previous years too which leads me to my number one uh, my number one game is uh one that probably a few people may expect is called is the witcher old world one of my favorite games one of my favorite deck building mechanics one of my favorite exploration mechanics it was a combination of all the genres that i really like about a board game of exploration rpgs deck building combat with uh multiple different enemies or betraying others by <laughs> attacking other uh, witches in the game and I thought that was a really clever concept of that you're all old schools of uh, of old um, from the old uh, from the old world and you're all combating to be the best school out there and uh, everyone <laughs> is out uh, for each other and everyone's out for winning all those trophies but in order to do that you've got to go and explore the schools to level yourself up so you can actually compete a lot better than uh, you would if you were just a weak so like you draw more cards you can do more combos or you can use more of your special ability to cause a lot of things to help uh, uh, make things easier for you but as a whole, it was one of my most favourite experiences to bring to the table and try out even my new games table that I've been able to use with it. And it's uh, and it was just such a fun experience. But I'm really, really excited for 2024 and what is to bring. And I hope you guys have had a great 2023 as well, playing a whole range of games. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the new year. But I hope you guys uh, make sure you all like, subscribe to this video. Make sure you check out the others' top 10s because they're, they're pretty good too. Um, but most importantly, guys, have a good new year. Happy new year and stay safe or die rolling.